Hello and welcome to Tau Capes, the podcast that covers film, television, comics, and games. I'm your host, Cody Nestor, and alongside me as always is my co-host, Todd Hill. What's up, guys? Uh, well, Todd, we're finally here. This recording session has been a long time coming, it I seems. Uh, we were originally supposed to record this uh, several days ago, but between me being sick, then you were sick, then someone apparently was trying to steal my identity this week. <laughs> I don't know why in God's name anyone would want to be me, <laughs> but have at it. But we're, we're finally here, ready right. to record, ready to talk about uh, things that are going on in film and television and a little bit of uh, everything else in between. So, uh uh, the video version of today's episode is available on uh, YouTube. If you're enjoying the show, uh, please consider following us on uh, your podcast platform of choice and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Today we're talking about Godzilla Minus One. Japan is already devastated by the war when a new crisis emerges in the form of a giant monster. Godzilla Minus One was released on December 1st, 2023 on a budget of $15 million and has made $35 million worldwide at the time of recording. It has a Rotten Tomatoes score of 97% and an audience score of 98%. Let's talk non-spoilers. So, Todd, what did you think of Godzilla Minus One? Uh, not to get into a whole lot up front, but I, I, <coughs> I was blown away by this movie. You know, you usually will say, would I recommend this movie to someone? That's my next question. Okay. Would you recommend people pay money to go see Godzilla Minus One in a theater? Yes. On two counts. Uh, speaking, I don't even need to talk to Godzilla fans. You've already been there. Yeah. But if you're the general audience, uh, if you've ever thought about taking in a Godzilla movie, you've been hesitant, you've heard about some campy stuff maybe in the past, you're kind of unsure. If ever there's one to start with, it's this one right here. I, I would highly recommend if you want to see one, see this one. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think you're right. I think Godzilla fans are already there, and they know they know what we're talking about. It's just the, it's the mass audience, the general audience, that maybe, like you said, think this is a goofy, or they're they're looking at that Godzilla versus Kong trailer. They right. think, or they've been watching the MonsterVerse kind of go into that silly. This is a real. This is a real film. Yeah, it's a good Godzilla film, but it's, it's also just a good film in general. And like, would I recommend people pay money? Yes, yeah. I would say definitely go see this. This is. Well, we'll talk about it, but this is one of the best films of the year, and I have more to say about that, but it's definitely one of the best films of the year. Uh, for the budget of this film being $15 million for what you get on screen, it's, like, a lot. it's just an amazing film. Like, I really, like, if you, um, you know, obviously you'll have to get passes if you're, if you're not someone who likes uh, going to films and reading subtitles. This is a subtitled film. Right. It's a Japanese film, obviously, so you might have to get past that a little bit. But if you can get past that, if you're someone that doesn't like reading subtitles, it is definitely worth your time. It's worth your money for exactly. sure. Before we discuss the film in detail, Todd, we got another round of how many stars. Oh. This is probably the easiest one you'll ever have. Oh, man. God. I have five audience reviews for Godzilla Minus One here. I'll read your review, and you tell me from one to five how many stars you think the person gave the film. Okay. Are there any half stars? No half stars. No half stars. Craig P. says, Minus One is the best Godzilla movie of them all so far. I was surprised by the depth of storytelling and the poignant struggles of the main character. Metaphors abound. How many stars? Five stars. (laughs) Uh, Thwip Snicked Mwow. (laughs) Is that the name? That's the name. Or is something going on over there? I just had a strunk. Okay. (laughs) Uh, He says, or they say, I don't know. Sorry to assume their gender. Period piece. Drama, horror, monster movie, excellent and accessible for foreigners on all fronts. Professional critics and general audiences can agree Toho has an exceptional product on their hands. It's well worth the watch and reading of subtitles for those who are already initiated into the Godzilla franchise, as well as those who aren't, and I'm not just saying that as the former. How many stars? Five stars. Five stars. Did you take the pattern here, folks? Yeah. Justin says, I'm a lifelong Godzilla fan. Okay, obsessive. But believe me when I say that this may be the best in the series since the 1954 debut and a film that can and should be appreciated by anyone. Everything works in this original inventive film. The visuals and creature design, the believable story given the irradiated monster in the middle of it, and the human drama that is so often the boring bits between atomic destruction. Even if you have franchise fatigue, book your tickets for this one. And we'll be talking about it for years. Five stars. Five stars. (laughs) Gerardo says, geez, that's a good-ass movie. Five stars. Five stars. (laughs) Desmond B. says, this is our final one. This is not the legendary pictures Godzilla who is seen uh, as a hero. This version of Godzilla is violent, 
evil, and just out for complete carnage. The acting and story are superior to the recent Legendary Pictures Godzilla universe. This needs to be seen in a movie theater. Highly, highly recommended. Five stars. It's actually a one star. No, I'm just kidding. No, whoa. I'm just kidding. It's a, five, it's a five star. I run the table. Good job, pal. So <laughs> let's let's talk about uh, minus one in depth here. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it to you first, Ty. So where, where do you want to start uh, talking about uh, Godzilla minus one? You know, this was a uh, a pleasant surprise to me. But you know, I was trying to stay away from spoilers for this movie ahead of its North American release because you know Japan got it way earlier than we did, but. I was surprised to learn that this was a period piece. I love me a good period piece. <laughs> <laughs> Todd is on record. I yes. heard that so many times in uh, when we seen Captain America. The first the Avenger. The first Avenger. I'm like, Cody, it's would, a period piece. I'd be like, Todd, you know, but I have a little issue with this. But Todd, it's a period piece, Cody. <laughs> I heard that for weeks. That was always my defense yeah, for anything. That film. First Avenger. It's right. a period piece. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I knew nothing about this Godzilla film. I didn't research anything. I didn't look anything up other than the title and the trailers that we had watched. Right. Uh, I did not know it was a period piece either. I figured like kind of some more of the recent Godzillas, I figured it would be kind of in modern day. Exactly. But I, thankfully it's not because it is is so much better served by being a period piece, I think. Right. Uh, so let, let's talk about the, the, the setting of it a little bit. It's uh, 1945. So it's near the end of World War II. And we're kind of following, the story follows a... Uh, turns into a former kaze, uh, kamikaze pilot. So we're kind of following him as he's uh, uh, trying to think of a way out of being a kamikaze pilot. Right. So he ends up kind of uh, saying that his plane has technical problems right. and landing on uh, Odo Island. Right. And while he's there, the mechanic, uh, let me get his name here, it is uh, Tachibana. So he's a, he's kind of the head mechanic, and he, he figures a little bit during the movie, and especially towards the ending of the film. He kind of questions him a little bit. So our main character uh, is Shikishima. I think I'm saying that right. I think you're right. Again, sorry, folks. But I'm letting we're, Cody handle all these yeah, names. I'm from the South. <laughs> it's hard for me. Um, but he he's our, he's our pilot, and Tachibana is kind of like, do you really got problems, my guy? Yeah. Is that, that plane, plane really messing we up We went on through you? it with a fine-tooth cone. You can't find a thing wrong with it. I don't it. think there's nothing wrong with it. Are you sure you <laughs> don't want to die for your country, my guy? Is that is that the problem here? Is that here? the problem here? Uh, so he's like, how dare you, basically. And then during that evening, they get attacked by none other than a big-ass Godzilla. Right. Uh, one thing I really like, I don't I don't know, I'm, I've never watched... You know, I haven't watched all the Godzilla films. There's quite a few. I've watched a handful. Uh, is it something you ever remember seeing the uh, the? So when Godzilla is nearing or about to appear, we get a lot of like fish and creatures from like the deep sea floor, kind of popping up in the water. So is that something that's that's been in Godzilla lore before? Or is I'm, that something new to this? I'm trying to go off of memory. I think maybe that may have been something touched on in the original. Now I may be wrong. My memory. God knows it ain't what it used to be. Right. I think that has popped up maybe in the series before. But right. Okay. I, I don't know if it has or not, but I think that's a that's a nice little it was detail. A nice touch, it's yeah. a good precursor, like because it, it's done a couple times in the film, and then it, you know, there's a couple times it's not spoken about really, and you're like, oh shit, we know Godzilla's coming now because here's some here's some coming up crazy from shit from the sea floor. <laughs> um, but when Godzilla first attacks, you can clearly see that he's not that big. He's still kind of on the small side. Yeah. So throughout the film, like we kind of see that he's. Uh, I think that they they kind of say that he is uh, kind of mutated and grown from. Let me see where it was here. Uh, they're they're doing some like new nu- uh, nuclear tests at. Uh, I think it's Bikini Atoll. Right. Is what they say is where he was kind of irradiated. But when you first see him, he's just he's not he's not big. He's not much bigger than like probably a couple stories tall, yeah. like a house size maybe. <laughs> Something like that, but he uh, he kind of comes through and kind of decimates the mechanic, mechanics on Odo Island. And Shikishima he gets in the plane. Tachibana tells him to get in his plane. Uses like you know twenty millimeter gun, whatever it is, to right. kind of like shoot Godzilla. But he's already dealing with some stuff from the war and not wanting to die. And he doesn't really have the ability to to shoot at Godzilla. Either. He can't pull the trigger. No, no. So he's just he's kind of frozen there while the rest of them, except for just a few of the mechanics, end up pretty much getting wiped out on Odo Island. What else you got, Ty? Where do you want to go next? I was actually a little bit concerned in that first Godzilla scene because it was lit kind of darkly. I'm like, oh, my God, don't tell me we're going here. Right, we're going to hide. <laughs> Thankfully, we didn't. Yeah, we're going to hide the way he looks. <laughs> right. A la Godzilla 98, yeah. trying to hide him behind darkness. 
Yeah, but no, no. Thankfully, like you, other than that, that's the only scene that's in. That's the only scene where he's in darkness. Yeah, everything, everything else, else is pretty daylight, much broad daylight or like amazing. overcast, something like that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, talking about how big Godzilla is, so I wanted to kind of compare this to some of the other Godzilla films. So, in this film, Godzilla is 164 feet tall. Um, so to kind of put that in perspective, uh, Godzilla 98 Zilla was 229 feet tall. Uh, Godzilla 2014 is 354 feet tall. Wow. Empire State Building being 1,250 feet tall and the Statue of Liberty being 305 foot tall. So this, this Godzilla, his primary form is the second shortest primary form of a Godzilla incarnation on film. He's actually the second shortest Godzilla. Doesn't feel like it though. No, it really doesn't. Honestly, like I mean, I, I knew he wasn't like I knew he wasn't monster versus Godzilla big, like right. cause that one is obviously like gigantic, 354 foot. But like it felt right. I know before we said Zilla not being as tall as like the, the Statue of Liberty felt a little off. But then you kind of kind of remember it's set in it's a first appearance. He's kind of growing. You see him grow in the film from like right. that first attack to where he is. So there's potential for him to get even bigger, obviously. But I think for this, I think it felt appropriate. Yeah, I, would say. I mean, when I saw that scene, I was like, yeah, that's him. But I know in my heart that's not as big as he's going to be. This is just maybe his first version. Right, right. Yeah, I yeah. knew he was going to get bigger. Right, yeah, exactly. And like I wasn't I, worried, you know. Like I said, if this continues or if the, if the filmmakers and the production team behind this continue again, he has the potential to get bigger, but I don't think it necessarily has to. Like, right. I think it's. I think it felt fine. So, uh, Todd, a big part of Godzilla film, sometimes to the detriment. So I'll tell you, I'll tell you this one little anecdote. So after we saw this, um, obviously we've been we've been rewatching a couple Godzilla movies. We watched Godzilla twenty fourteen. Uh, I heard good things about Shin Godzilla. Right. I've heard that people talk about it as like one of the better Godzilla films. Like you know, it's kind of people kind of put it the fifty four original Shin Godzilla now this and like their tops. Mm -hmm. I, I tried to watch. I couldn't do it. Really? It's a lot of people. Have you seen it? I actually I tried to watch it a few years ago when it came out, and I don't think I made it through. Yeah. Or I kept falling asleep. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's, uh, <laughs> it's I mean, if you love it, I can see like I you know I skim it through it, and I can see it's. I know it was known for a lot of weird Godzilla stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it seems like he kind of like you know starts off like tadpoleish and got these like yeah. real big bug eyes and like. He kind of keeps evolving and like he, he evolves different means to like subvert the military. Like, you know, not only does he have like his like atomic breath, but he's got lasers coming out of his back and all this kind of stuff. Right. But the thing with Godzilla films is like most they're known for, you know, the big kaiju action, but they're also known for a lot of boring stuff with people talking in boardrooms and right. meeting rooms and stuff like that. And that was Shin Godzilla for me. It's a lot of people talking in boardrooms and not a lot. And that was a worry that I had about this. Oh, exactly. Going into it yeah. is like, all right, what is the human drama going to be here? Like, what are we going to see? Is it going to hold my interest? And it absolutely does. I don't know if it's just the period piece or the way the characters are done, but uh, kind of tell us a little bit about our main character and kind of the, the backstory of the human drama here. Yeah, I mean, like you touched on, the human drama and the human element in this movie is its the best I've ever seen, I think, in a Godzilla movie. I mean, the close second or maybe a little bit above would be the original 1954. But I may even give the nod to the human element in this one over that one. It was just, it was top notch. Yeah, so we got, uh, so we got Shikishima. So he's our, he's our former kamikaze pilot. He's so, sort of our damaged kamikaze pilot. Can't deal with, you know, the thoughts of killing himself. For he's his got, and, he, and he's got survivor's guilt, too, from, right. from not being able. So he's got a little bit of PTSD. He's also, like, kind of ridden with this survivor's guilt. We kind of see him go back to um, his hometown uh, looking for his parents. Obviously, like, it's, from, been, bombed. it's been bombed out from the war. Uh, his parents are gone. He, we kind of see him talking to his neighbor, uh, Sumiko. Right. She kind of fits a little bit, uh, kind of pops up uh, several times throughout the film. She's kind of telling him, you know, kind of what happened there. And then he kind of meets um, kind of like a, a little kind of vagabond, I guess. She's kind of like Just somebody homeless. from his town. Yeah, yeah she's kind of homeless. There's, it's just, uh, it's, uh, her name is Noriko. And she is like just kind of uh, she meets him. Uh, she ends up she's being I think chased by somebody, uh, and she's got a little baby with her. Not even her. She just found the baby. Yeah. So yeah, we learned throughout the movie like it's uh, I think she was near a hospital or like worked in a hospital or knew someone that was 
hurt through the attacks, and they're like, hey, you know, we're not going to make it. Can you take our child? Right. She agrees. I think the baby's name is Akiko, if I'm not mistaken. You're right, yeah. And she agrees to take the little baby, and then in her being chased, she's like, here you go, hot potato. <laughs> and she she gives the baby uh, uh, to Shiki, and he kind of like, it's like, oh, my God, what do I do? What do I do with this kid? Where did this woman go? She ends up reappearing later, and they kind of like form this little like, dysfunctional type family yeah, not really a family yeah it's, exactly it's like kind of a little makeshift little family and like you know you would think it would be boring in a Godzilla movie but the, the backstory, like the little family drama you kind of see them I think we're in like 1947 at this point so we're, we're a couple years removed from everything at the beginning of the film and they're just kind of making their way in the world like he's trying to find a job um, she's at home taking care of the baby and you kind of see them kind of grow as characters and their relationship kind of grow throughout the film, especially the early parts of the film. You know, he ends up getting a job. You see their little like house that they live in, mm-hmm. like goes from like this little hovel hole in the wall. They kind of start building it up right. little bit by little. They start dressing like, you know, they go from like rags and like dressing nicer. Right. Exactly. You know, we see her kind of like schooling and like taking care of Akiko and all this kind of stuff. And it's just like really, really like it's sweet and it's cute and it's interesting and it's like there's good there's good dynamics and at first you can kind of see Shiki is like he doesn't want anything to do with her in like a romantic capacity right but then that kind of grows a little bit throughout the film as they get closer to each other um and then we eventually see that Shiki takes a job with the military uh basically being a minesweeper right right so the U.S. and I guess you know uh you know they put a bunch of like mines under underwater like you're during the war like these big ass fucking like you know mines and they hire different contracted boats to go out and kind of like go and like sweep for those mines and like disable them like basically cut them bring them to the surface blow them up. and blow them up <laughs> exactly so he uh Shiki ends up getting onto a ship uh what is the ship's name the ship i had it here we we were talking about it before uh the Shinsei Maru Ah. So he boards that ship, and then you've got our captain, which is Yoji, which is an important character to remember. We've got Shiro, which is kind of like a young guy, like, hey, I want to be in the war. No, no, you don't. (laughs) You don't know what I've seen, boy. You know what I mean? Right. we got that kind of set-up character, and then we've got – there, uh, I think it's Sasuke. He's like another, like one of the the techs on the ship. And then we've got uh, Kenji, Kenji Noda, which is our doctor. He's our uh, kind of our scientist. He's a former. Right. He worked as a weapon engineer through uh, through the war, basically for Japan. So that's kind of our little ragtag group of uh, group of people on our little ship here. And then there's a point in the film where it kind of gets a little bit like Jaws. Almost. You know, I thought about that. Yeah, it's I like actually did. it kind of it kind of comes to a point. There's a point where um, they know. I think it's um, they're trying to basically stall Godzilla. They tell him that they want him to like you know kind of blow him up or whatever, but it's really like a stall tactic. And they're kind of out on the open sea, and he's like trailing them. And it was like very he's very following the boat. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's, it's very it, Jaws. It very much felt like felt like Jaws. I really love that shot because you of like Godzilla just his top of his head kind of mm-hmm. just following like this big ass <laughs> creature just following this little tiny little boat. Exactly, exactly. So they're they're just stalling for time for like a bigger you know kind of vessel to to arrive um but then they end up uh cutting one of the mines and uh trying to like kind of maneuver it to go into Godzilla's mouth and they do a la jaws right you know uh the the uh the gas air tank, tank air tank yeah. yeah exactly so it goes into his mouth they shoot the tank and then it kind of blows part of Godzilla's head off and they can see maybe this thing can be killed right right you know like if this damaged him he's not Invincible, but he heals super quickly, quick, super yeah. quickly. So it's going to take more than just one little mine here. What did you think overall of the look of Godzilla? Let's talk about that. Man, I thought he looked fantastic. I mean, he's big. He's thick. <laughs> yeah, I said that to you. I was like, once we got out of the movie, I was like, Godzilla got a fat ass. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, he's very, very, like... Uh, I mean, I don't remember seeing a thicker Godzilla in the waist. I don't. Uh, like, he's he's super thick and he's super slow, which is what the character should be. Yeah, the character has always been depicted. He ain't running <laughs> down the street with Kong in this universe. Like he he's thick, he's lumbering, his steps have weight to them. I like how he had those. Looks like there was those additional spines would pop up as he's charging his. Yeah. 
I always called it atomic breath. Didn't they so, call it fire breath here? No, they call it heat ray. Heat ray. Okay. Yeah. So and then it's like he has his uh, his atomic breath. Like a, that's what I've always known it as. Mm-hmm. But like here they call it his heat ray. But yeah, I think that's something that's new for this film. Like in the new in the Godzilla mythology is those spikes that raise mm-hmm. super super effective. Like not yeah. only because this unlike the Godzilla twenty fourteen, it kind of obviously you see the blue light, but it kind of builds through that um, the kind of the 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 sound that you hear there. Yeah. Like you hear that in the 2014. So like in this one, there's not really much of a sound. It's like you, it's signaled when he's going to release it by those spines mm-hmm. growing. Uh, it's just, and man, when it releases, it's, it's fucking devastating. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about, I think, I think it may be my favorite part of the movie. I don't know. Like there's so many good parts, but like, uh, walk us through what happens in Ginza. You know what I'm talking about? When Godzilla attacks Ginza. Where he makes landfall and he attacks the train that uh, yes, his uh, lady friend is yeah, on. Yeah, so Noriko, she uh, comes to uh, comes to uh, Shiniki a little bit earlier, and she's like, I want to get a job. I've got a job lined up in Ginza. It's being rebuilt faster than, than we all thought after the war. Uh, Sumiko is going to watch the baby mm-hmm. for me. You know, he's like, don't I give you enough money? She's like, it's, you know, she wants her own thing. She yeah. wants to do her own thing. So she gets a job in Ginza. Yeah. She's on the train. Uh, Godzilla makes his landfall. He just happens to take a big old chomp out of the train she's on. I think he actually picks up the car she's in or yes. close to it. She's mm-hmm. like dangling from the bottom of it. Yes, exactly. He's making his way through the streets. You can actually see people like getting kind of squashed. Did you not? Did, well, am I crazy? Like mm-hmm. people actually getting squashed yes. under his feet. Yeah, like that was amazing. Yeah, I mean he's he's just going <laughs> through the town. I mean this this is not the 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 legendary monster verse Godzilla where it's like he's savior of man and like working you know no. keeping things in balance. This this Godzilla he's he's an animal. He's yeah. like he's just out to to destroy and like he's he's a nuisance he needs to be destroyed he's this tail swishing destroying buildings left and right squishing people under his feet yeah yeah just tearing everything down i think you said before like what was it you said before we watched the film you wanted to see something and a train get stomped or something like that yeah <laughs> i don't think we got a train getting stomped but we definitely get a train like a godzilla versus a train or right. destroying a train for sure um but yeah basically um Going back to the heat ray or the atomic breath, like uh, the military is kind of closing in on him. I think they're like blasting him from the harbor, I think. And just that build up to releasing that heat ray the first time. It was amazing. I've never seen his 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 atomic breath, heat ray, whatever you want to call it, depicted so like viscerally. Mm-hmm. Like it is just complete and utter destruction. It's like almost like an atom bomb. Yeah, it's off. like it's like its own version of like an atomic bomb mm-hmm. going off. And it's just like fucking blowing everybody back everywhere. All the buildings are blown out. It's like a huge wave of a, like a huge blast wave of like wind and destruction. And what happens to poor Noriko Todd? Uh they're right there close to an alley and she pushes him down the alley to save him and she gets took away in the, in the aftermath. Yeah, she, he learned that uh, Godzilla was attacking Ginza. He goes to Ginza to try to save Noriko, and she ends up being the one that saves him, and she ends up getting caught in Godzilla's blast. And she gone. She gone, he's, unfortunately. He's, that was an emotional scene, too, with him right after that. Oh, where he just breaks down. Yeah, he just he just breaks down completely. Yeah, uh, like he's he's. I mean, this guy. He's again. He's already living with survivor's guilt. He's living with PTSD from the war. He's lost the one stable person in his life, and he's kind of talking to his his boat crew. And like, I think for the first time, realizes just how much she meant to him. And you know, I think it's um, I want to say it's Yoji maybe who's like. Why don't you tell her you love her? Right, you know, like, right. why didn't you marry that girl? And he's mm. like, I should have, you know, like kind of thing. And it's like, it's really, again, the human drama. It was amazing. Every great. bit of it works. Every every absolute bit of it works. There was not a scene with any human character. I'm like, oh, where's Godzilla? <laughs> is, is, is it time for Godzilla uh, yet? I mean, in most of these movies, that's what that is. is yeah. You see that human stuff start, you're like, oh, Jesus. When's yeah, Godzilla coming? Time for me to take a piss. I want to go get something to eat out of the fridge. Yeah, but not here. Like, I mean, it was really, really good stuff. I can't, I can't kind of, you know, emphasize that enough. Another thing that I think, uh, obviously, we talked about the setting, the look of the film, 
not only the setting of it, the look of it, like just the the cinematography, all that, absolutely top notch. It had kind of, I don't know if it's just me, it had a very Christopher Nolan kind of look right. and vibe to it. That might right. just be me, but like I equate it to kind of that kind of level of filmmaking. Like yeah. it's all top notch. Another thing that's absolutely perfect in this film is the music. Oh, yeah. That original score hits, man. And it's yeah. just amazing. Not only is there like the original score of the film that's just absolutely perfect for the scenes in the end, but you get that original Godzilla kind of thing. Right. You know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. And you think it'd be like too much, but it's not. It's, it's just It just really cements everything right on top of it. I mean, it, it's absolutely it's absolutely flawless. And the amazing thing about that first uh, a landfall scene is it starts, it happens, it finishes, and it, we don't cut away to any human shit. There's no tease. There's no, oh, they're going to fight. Well, we're going to go talk 20 minutes. We yeah. might see the fight in the distance. Right. Oh, here's a little bit of the end of it. It starts. It happens. It ends. You see it all. It's there. I mean, and there, there's not, to me, there's not one bad cringe effect. We've talked no. about that before for other films. This is a $15 million like we're 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 gonna record and talk about another Godzilla movie after we record this one actually. Right. But like that had a hundred and sixty million dollar budget that does not look as good as this does. No way. This is it's impressive. And like the look of Godzilla not only it's just nailed, it's like it's it's close enough to the classic, but it also kind of stands on its own a little bit. Exactly. It's not got that. And then there's good parts about the other versions of the Godzilla, the Monster vs. Godzilla that I like, but like this is when you think Godzilla, like that's in my mind, I think this is the closest. It's what kinda, he's supposed to look like. Yeah, exactly. Or at least how he was, you know, how Toho originally created him and how he's been imagined. Right. This sticks very, very close very to that. Close. I don't think anybody could be unhappy with that. That's a fan of God, a true Godzilla, I think. Um, so let's let's kind of move into the end in here, Todd. Uh, so can you kind of explain a little bit about what the ultimate kind of plan here is a little bit? Like how they're uh, – Dr. Uh, Noda, he kind of comes up with a, a kind of a plan to uh, potentially kill Godzilla once and for all. So it's basically not really a military operation. It's like private citizens. Which is one thing I really like. Yeah, right. they kind of gather everybody like a town hall kind of meeting because, like, the U.S. won't intervene. MacArthur's like, nah. Yeah, if we, we ain't getting messed up with that. We got some stuff going on with the Russians, and if they <laughs> see, eh, it's, it's tricky for us. We're out on the big lizard. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, like, and then the Japanese, obviously, they're still recovering from what's happened in the war, the bombings and everything else. They're still recovering. So it's like a brigade of, like, basically volunteers. Yeah, exactly. Like fishermen yeah. and boats, and, like, there's a few decommissioned, you know, machines of war, so to speak, and boats and vessels that they have. But it's basically the the our, our group at the end our heroes are mostly just volunteers from around Japan right so he's kind of got this plan where if they're going to uh, kind of get in close proximity to him as they can with these boats and kind of engulf him or entrap him in like freon chamber type belts yeah so there's like uh they want to like basically wrap around him in like freon tanks because like if you rupture them they kind of uh they kind of uh, lower the water's like buoyancy and it would cause them to like sink sink like a rock so they want to sink him to like 1500 feet and if that the pressure doesn't kill him. The other plan is they've got some guys from like the balloon company or whatever it is, you know, raise him up really fast. Right, they're going to bring him up and kind of you know give him decompress that decompress him. Decompress him. So if the sinking doesn't work, the bringing him up may end up being the thing that uh you know, kind of the pressure, the rising pressure back may crush him. Yeah. So that's basically the plan in a nutshell. So take us through kind of a little bit. Uh, what else is uh, what else is going on with our main character though? He's got his own ideas. He's 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 going to do it himself. You know, he's carried all this guilt and all this emotion through this whole movie, and uh, he sees it up to him to take this guy out. He's going to take out the creature. Yeah. So to do that, obviously he's a pilot. So to do that, he needs a plane. So I think uh, the doctor kind of tells him like where they have a decommissioned plane. It's a J seven W Shinden fighter. So it's kind of like a prototype fighter they were making for the war. Uh, they've just kind of been left to kind of rot and hang out. So it needs to be repaired. So uh, 
they find the old engineer from Odo Island. Tachibana. Right. So he goes to try to seek out Tachibana. The only way he can do it is to kind of uh, kind of uh, antagonize him. He sends letters out to him to, to hopefully he gets one to like say, hey, it's not my fault all those people died, blah, blah, blah. Like, you blame me. Yeah. And so that does get Tachibana to come out of hiding. Tachibana comes out and beats his ass. <laughs> uh, and then he kind of reveals what he wants to do. He wants him to repair the plane for him. He does. And then we kind of get... A little at the end, they repair the plane, and he's kind of like, "All right, here's here's this in the plane, here's that in the plane," and we kind of like we our audio pulls away, so we can't quite hear what he's saying at the end as he's like showing him something yeah, in the back yeah. there, and you're like, "Hmm, what's he telling him? What's he telling him there?" Yeah, exactly. So uh, they start the plan. the 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 day has come to kind of get Godzilla there. It, the plan is for uh, Sneaky to lure Godzilla basically out to a point in the ocean so they can encircle him with the boats, get the Freon tanks around him. For the most part, it goes pretty well. It goes pretty smooth. Yeah, for the most part, for roping a 165-foot dinosaur, <laughs> it goes pretty smooth. Yeah. So they rope him up. I mean, he's kind of – I like the parts, too, where, like, she, you know, kind of, she's kind of, like, flying around him and, like, he's kind of, like, just barely kind of missing him. Yeah. All that stuff's really good. But uh, the plane goes pretty well. They wrap him up. They deflate him or they lower him. Uh, he gets down. They get him down to the 1,500 feet. But then when they try to use the balloons to bring him back up, at first I thought, I don't know if you did, but at first I thought it was like blood coming out of the water. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, it worked. But it's like him biting through those balloons. Uh, yeah. And all the all the balloons that they're using to ascend him back up, he's like bit through. So only comes up to about 800 feet. Yeah. So they don't have the ship power to drag him back up out of the water until the rest of our volunteers show up from around Japan. With a bunch of tugboats. A bunch yeah, so, of we, tugboats. so we get our nice little, like, you know, um, our little moment where all everybody bands together. They come, they hook up to the big boat, try to pull Godzilla's fat ass out of the water, <laughs> and then uh, ascending him still doesn't work. So what happens from there, Don? So we get our, our main hero in his kamikaze run. Yeah. He's heading this, straight down Godzilla's gullet. This time he he's he he couldn't he couldn't do it. What he he couldn't do the job before. He couldn't That's kamikaze right. and kill himself. But now he plans to do it. And what happens? He's going in and he's just getting ready to go in and release the bomb right in Godzilla's old throat. We cut back to the plane being repaired, yep. and his engineer tells him, "Right here's a switch. It's an ejector switch. Yep. You hit this button. You get out. You, you live. live. You live. You live." He forgives him for what happened on Odo exactly. Island, you know, because he blamed him for those deaths before, but it really wasn't his fault. And he tells him to live, and so he does. He ejects out of the the plane. Godzilla's head right in his mouth, boom, blown right, right to fuck off. Yeah, and that, that face gets fucked up. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's it's a cool. It's like I mean I'm telling you, the effects are just fantastic. It's For one, a fifteen million dollar yeah, movie, there's it, no it's just great effect. Yeah, there's no like you know there's no cringe, there's no bad, there's no like mm, yeah, you know none of that. Like it's all fantastic, and that the whole ending, like everything, just it's it's a great, it's just a great kind of climax to this film it feels at the same time small but in like a big way if that makes sense it's like yeah yeah it's like it's a it's it's not like over the top it's not overdone it's not over dramatic or cliche it just it feels like a real kind of scenario yeah. that you could see happen if a 165 foot <laughs> dinosaur appeared out of nowhere and started destroying your country you right know? Um, but yeah, so he flies the plane in, they blow Godzilla's head off. Uh, he chooses to live in the end. Um, the crew members, they, they see, you kind of see his body break apart. The crew members, everybody kind of celebrates. Um, one other little scene we get at the end one, and during the battle, kind of going back and forth. We kind of, uh, we were talking about after the film, there's a part where Sumiko, his neighbor, who's, who's watching the baby, he's right. left the baby in her care after, uh, Norika died, uh, Norika died. And she gets a telegram. Like, it's kind of, like, inserted, like, right in the middle of the battle. So you're like, who gives a fuck about a telegram? Why is she getting a letter right now? Who cares? I asked you <laughs> if you originally thought what I thought. Like, as soon as I saw that telegram, I'm like, that's a telegram telling her, telling someone that Noriko is still alive somewhere. And turns out she is still alive. She's recovering in the hospital. Uh, he gets this news. Uh, 
and goes right off to see her in the hospital. Turns out she is alive, so you get a little bit at the end of it. You get a little bit of your happy ending. Yeah, right. but the family that wasn't really wanting to be a family is a family. Is a family and back together. And we can only hope he finally told her that he does love her. Puts a ring on that girl's finger. Puts a ring on the <laughs> finger. And uh, what, what's our last kind of shot of the film here, Todd? So we go back down to the depths of the ocean, and we see one of those chunks of Godzilla floating there, and it starts percolating. Yeah, you can see <laughs> Godzilla ain't done. He ain't done for. He might it might take him a while to fully regenerate. It might be he might not be back to the seventies, <laughs> but he's, he's coming, coming back. back. He's coming back. Uh overall, I mean, just just a fantastic film. I mean, there's not really a false note here that I that I can see. There's nothing that I can fault it for. Um, so, uh, what else do you have for us, Todd? Anything there? Uh, some things we kind of touched on throughout a little bit, but. Uh, it's some pretty violent stuff in this movie. Uh, yeah. From the first appearance of Godzilla, you know, just chomping on those engineers, flinging them away, uh, people getting squished under his toes, mm-hmm. Godzilla himself by like, getting his whole fucking head blown off. Yeah. Amazing. It feels <laughs> it, it feels like a kind of an adult, it feels like a realistic take on it. It's not, you know, I'm not, I don't dislike the idea of, a, of a, the Godzilla character being like, friend of man and right. a balance, you know, uh, a, a being of t- to make the balance of the world and that kind of thing. And there's room for those takes. But if you're, if you're wanting my personal take on it, like what I want in a Godzilla film, it's this. He's, you know, he's Just the, the antag- force of nature. Yeah, he's the antagonist and all this. And there's still room to go here for him to be the antagonist and also maybe introduce you know, another other, kaiju other that he has to defend you know, Japan from. I doubt we'll see this film continued in any way. I doubt it. It kind of lives on its own, and I'm right. perfectly fine with that. This can live on its own. There's also there's more room for other Godzilla takes, but I'm fine if there's not a direct sequel or anything to this. I think it's almost damn near perfect as yeah, it is. Exactly. Uh, so, Todd, uh, ready to go into our final reviews? I think I'm ready. All right, so we rank films using a 1 to 10 scale. Starting from 1, the ranks are Torture, 2, Awful, 3, Bad, 4, Subpar, 5, Mediocre, 6, Decent, 7, Good, 8, Great, 9, Amazing, 10, Masterpiece. Todd, give us any final thoughts you want and your review score for Godzilla minus 1. I think we've all heard the old familiar saying, you know, you can't go home again. Right. Well, Godzilla did. He went back home to this studio that brought him to life 70 years ago. And what we get is, in my opinion, the best Godzilla movie since the original. Uh, if you can get me invested in a story to the point that I'm rooting for the humans over the big guy, you've done something special. I give this movie a nine, which on our scale is amazing. Nice. Nice. Um, so for me, this is the the best Godzilla film. Uh, I've seen the 1954 original, but this still takes the top spot. It's one of those, it's of its time. It has its effects of the time, and it's a fantastic film, but it is kind of of its time. Right. One day this will be of its time when someone's watching Godzilla beamed be. into their skull. <laughs> but this is the best Godzilla film to me. And like I said before, it's also a masterpiece of a film in general. Um, Oppenheimer still takes my top spot for the best film of 2023, but minus one is by far my favorite film of 2023. And we've seen some pretty good films we have, this year. Yeah. Um, for me though, I give Godzilla minus one and you know, my rating scale is flying Godzilla drop kicks. Oh yeah. I give it 10 hey. flying Godzilla drop kicks out of 10. I, I can't, there's not a fault win. I think, I think it's a 10 out of 10. I rank it as a masterpiece. I can't argue with you. I, I cannot. Yeah. I mean, for me, I've only given two, two 10 since we've been doing this and this is my second 10 and it goes to Godzilla minus one. All and right. I think it's very deserving. If, uh, Seriously, if you're listening to this and you've been debating it, uh, it's going to have a, a little bit of an extended uh, theatrical run here, I think, for a couple more weeks, but it's not going to be around much longer in the U.S. at least. So uh, I'm really, really, really saying if you have any interest in this, definitely go definitely see it. Definitely go see it. It's uh, just a great movie, period. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, it might not be for smaller children yeah, or anything like that, but uh, if you have any interest at all, Please definitely go support this movie. It's definitely worth being supported. It definitely um, is uh, a, a fantastic example of filmmaking and a fantastic Godzilla film. Exactly. So, Todd, tell everyone how they can find us and stay up to date with us on social media. We are Tal Capes on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Tal Capes Podcast on Facebook. 
You can also email us at towelcapespod at gmail.com. Also, if you're so obliged, leaving us a five-star review on your podcast app of choice really helps the show. Be on the lookout for this week's Popcorn Mumbles. We'll be talking about the 2014 film Godzilla. And a second Popcorn Mumbles. We'll be talking about the 1971 film Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Tal Capes will return next week. We want to thank you so much for listening. Until next time, bye, guys. See ya.